sure if space goes on forever <laughs> it might just be really really big in which case there's yes. a finite number of parallel universes but inflation predicts typically that it goes on forever the simplest space we all were taught in school in you know, a euclid's space also goes on forever uh, it gets more even more interesting with this inflation theory because it turns out it makes almost like a fractal space yes. where where there are these boundaries where inflation never stops and these everything within a, an expanding boundary is called is a level one multiverse and then there are many of them in the level two multiverse and this is such a violent process that the different parts of space that are made can actually if if, if physics if, if space can be in many different states kind of like water can be in different states you know ice yes. um, steam liquid you know with different properties if space can be like that too which string theory suggests then inflation is going to make all these different kinds of space that's the level two multiverse so there might be somewhere far far away where people learn in school that actually uh, oh, this is a good one the, peri the, the periodic table has only five kinds of atoms or 180 kinds of atoms and so on. So here in our universe, the physics would be taught the same across the planets, but the history is taught differently of how the civilization evolved, but in an alternative part of a, the next level of a, of a different place in the multiverse, that physics could in fact be different. Right, because, not, not because physics is truly different, it's still maybe ruled by string theory, but a lot of things that we thought were fundamental weren't. It's like if you were a fish and you spent your whole life in the ocean, you might think it was a law of physics that water is always a liquid, mm -hmm. just because you'd never seen an iceberg. Yes. And you would learn that water has this kind of viscosity and this kind of sound speed, which is not true if, if, you, if you're inside of an iceberg or a steam cloud. And then the third level, just, that just adds more humility, We've discovered that basically it's super hard to have any theory of physics that just makes the stuff that we can actually see and observe and nothing more. I gave you two examples. The quantum physics, the theory of the very small, has that same property. We've discovered that when we look really closely at the electrons and these other elementary particles that make up us, they can be in multiple places at once, but we're made of them. So that means we should be able to be in many places at once. And this guy, Hugh Everett, yeah. he worked that out in the 50s and showed that if, if quantum mechanics is just true, with no ifs and buts, there's this one equation, the Schrodinger equation, and that's it. Um, then, if, as you were saying earlier, it's as if our life kind of forks out. out. Yeah. There are many times when we make a decision snap decision you know should we ask this person on a date or not mm -hmm. where it might come down to just whether one neuron fired or not in the beginning triggering a whole cascade of events which could end up with you living Correct. in this city you know yes. being married to this person with children or living somewhere completely different doing something different yep and now that neuron firing might in turn have been determined just by the position of one little atom in your brain so if that atom was in two places at once yeah. eventually you're living in two different cities so this kind of branching and amplification of weirdness from the micro world where a little atom is in two places at once into the macro world is what leads to this uh so called many worlds interpretation of the level three multiverse if that's actually the way things are yeah then every time you get a parking ticket you can chill out and take solace in the fact that there was probably a parallel universe you know where you didn't it kind of takes the pressure off a little 